All right, guys, so this is gonna be the first in a series of, uh, you know, say lectures, but I, I always kind of associate questions with it in, a, in the learning process, <clears throat> mainly to talk about the developmental process. And you're gonna see these questions on your step exams and and such, so you gotta know these, okay? So, but, but don't get overwhelmed by the, the length of this question right here, because I think once we're done uh, with learning what we wanna learn today, you'll come back and, and actually answer this question rather easily. So when it comes to the developmental process, here's what you gotta know, okay? We, <clears throat> essentially, there's gross motor skills that you gotta be aware of and you know what's considered normal versus not normal. You have social skills, okay? So we have gross motor, then we got social skills. <clears throat> I'm also gonna discuss fine motor, okay? And the key with each one of these guys, and, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to learn this, we're going to apply it to a question, and then I'm going to do something very unique when it comes to something at the end, uh, one of the later lectures. But I'm going to reinforce these with those short videos, okay? So after this, uh, say, question right here, I'm going to go back and make some shorts that, uh, you know, that you can reinforce over and over and over just to kind of embed this information. But again, when it comes to development, you got gross motor, so gross motor skills, social skills, fine motor skills, then you have to talk about kind of like learning theory. They're going to ask you some questions like about that. And then the last thing I want you to know is basically some the testing that they do uh, to kind of determine whether people are <coughs> where they need to be, excuse me, where they need to be or, you know, IQ, IQ scores. And there's only a few that you really need to know. So, so here's our goal. And I'm going to give this to you kind of in chunks. Don't think, don't think, oh my God, this guy's going to bore me for the next uh, 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to try to keep it short and then just kind of keep feeding you different, uh, you know, additional tidbits uh, throughout this, okay? Now, for gross motor, okay, this is like, you know, obviously something physical that a kid has to do. So how are you going to learn this? And I saw this on a, on a YouTube video. Um, the guy wasn't speaking English, so, but you could, but it was good enough to where you can kind of interpret it, uh, about what he was trying trying to accomplish, and so I kind of stole it from there, okay? So, if you look at this like a person, obviously, right? Here's a person, a young person, and I want you to go put lines through this, okay? I want you to go two, four, six, eight, and you can go 10 or 12, all right? Just keep it simple, you can go 10. But <clears throat> what this means is two months, four months, six months, eight months, and just to keep it simple, you can say 10 months or 12 months, or which, you know, obviously is like basically one year, all right? So when it comes to gross motor achievement, at two months, we put this line across, <coughs> excuse me, across the neck. So at two months, they should be able to hold their head up, okay? An infant should be able to hold their head up. At four months, we put this basically at the elbow. They should be able to turn over, right? So at two months, head can they can lift their head up. Four months, they can turn over. Six months, it's right at the back, right? So they can sit up. Eight months, it's at the knee, so they can crawl. And then 12, 10 months, 12 months, you're thinking at, about walking, okay? So that should be considered normal, <coughs> you know, plus minus or, or whatnot. But for the most part, you know, if you're not, you know, if you're at 10 months and you're not being able to sit up, then you're, you're, you're not meeting the milestone, okay? So how are you going to remember gross motor skills? You're going to draw a person and you're going to go two, four, six, eight, ten, And the two was at the neck because head's going to be able to lift the head up at the elbow because you can turn over at the back because then you can be, you should be able to sit up at the knee for eight months. You should be able to crawl and then say 12 months, you should be able to walk. All right. So that's the gross motor skills. <clears throat> when it comes to fine motor skills, now I had that one short video and you know about what age should somebody able to do this, and I draw those symbols out. But actually, there's going to be an easier way, okay? Very much an, an easier way to do this. So here's how you're going to do it. Uh, when it comes to, and we're going to go uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this is years of age, okay? Years of age. So at one, you should be able to draw a squiggly line. Okay, well, nothing exciting there. For two, I want you to draw the two, and then at the bottom, it's like that, right? 
So at two, they sh a child should be able to draw parallel lines. At three, when you draw the three, at the bottom, you're going to continue it and make it a circle. Okay, so one squiggly line, two parallel line, three circle. For four, okay, if you had the four, you're just going to complete that top piece there. So that looks like a square. And right here for four, it's going to look like a cross. Okay, so again, one squiggly line, two parallel lines, three circle four, square, and a cross. And then five, you're just going to draw it in like right there. And so try five is going to be a triangle. Okay. <clears throat> and then six, you know, six, when you look at that six down there, you know, it's going to be multi-sided. Uh, and, and so, yeah, just think about that kind of multi-sided. But what I want you to really take home at the age of six is that death, they start to learn that death is permanent. Okay? That death is permanent. So what have we learned so far? We're in developmental uh, series. We've got to learn gross motor, fine motor, social skills, some theory about learning, and as well as some testing that we need to know for the step exam. So remember, gross motor, two, four, six, eight, ten, two, heads up, four, turns over, six, can sit up, eight months, crawl, 12 months, 10 months, can walk. Okay? For fine motor, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. One is a squiggly line, two parallel line, three circle, four is a square and a cross, five is going to be five years of age, you should be able to do all a triangle, and six, multi-sided, multi but death is permanent. <clears throat> so they could ask that question about, uh, you know, at what age would, you know, again, there's some, some, some type of question that relates about death, and the child needs to be at least six years of age before they kind of understand that death is a uh, permanent, and not just when someone comes back. All right, <clears throat> when it comes to social skills, I only want you to know uh, three three things here, okay? And you can draw the ages out, but it's more important that you just get the order correct. You got parallel play, you got associative play, you have cooperative play, okay? And that's really all I'm gonna say that you really need to know for the social skills aspect. Other than um, at eight years of age, at eight years, that's when there's kind of like a, definitely a, a peak of uh, anxiety, okay? And I'm sorry, not eight years, eight months, okay? Excuse me on that, eight months. I don't know why I say eight years, oh my gosh. But at eight years, I mean eight months, excuse me, eight months, that's when you have that peak form of, you know, separation, uh, anxiety, and such. And just kind of a, another date to remember, at 18 months is the earliest, okay? It's the earliest for toilet uh, training, okay? That you can expect the kid to maybe be successful. <clears throat> it's more based on a physiological, uh, you know, there's er, the capability of doing it. Uh, 18 months would be the earliest that that would occur. Okay, so eight months, <coughs> think uh, anxiety peak when it occurred, 18 months toilet training. Now, back to social skills. We have parallel play, and that's essentially where a child, they'll play beside each other, but there's no, no sense of communication or engagement with each other. They're just playing beside each other, okay? Now, <clears throat> when, it's, when it comes to associative play, they may play with the other child, but there's really no direction in, in kind of what they're, you know, they're really not playing together with some uh, goal in mind, okay? So they're, so parallel play, they're just playing next to each other and they may mimic uh, now, associative play, they, they may play with the other person, but not really associated in the same goal orientation. And then cooperative play, um, you know, they're playing with each, with each other, and then they're using, you know, social skills to interact, okay? So those are the three social, social skills, kind of the, the play levels, because they can ask you a question on this stuff, and you just have to understand parallel is, they're right there, but they're not really associating with each other. They're just kind of like looking at each other per se. Associative play is... There is, there may be <coughs> some interaction, but there's no uh, goal. They don't have the same goal in mind about what they're trying to play with. And then cooperative play is obviously there's some type of social skills uh, communication going on uh, between the two children. And again, eight months anxiety, 18 months, earliest time that you can consider toilet training. 
Now, I'm not going to go into over details in these things right now, but we're just going to touch base on them, okay? When it comes to theory, over the course of this, we're going to talk about the Piaget, we're going to talk about Erickson, and Vygotsky, okay? Vygotsky. Those are the three that you basically have to have some familiarity with, okay? <coughs> now, you know, with, with, with Piaget, there was four stages, you know, sensor... Uh, sensor motor, and then it's got three operational, pre-operational, concrete operational, and formal operational, okay? And then, for right now, I just want you to know that on the first stage, the sensor and motor, you're going to attach that word object permanence, okay? For right now, that's all I want you to know. Sensor and motor, object permanence. And each of the other uh, three stages, for four total, they're going to have kind of a unique uh, something very unique about them, and the other one's going to be something about how the water, uh, you know, how, how they can understand that, that when you pour something into a glass uh, from a, a skinny cylinder or from a flat one, that there, there's, a, there's a conservation uh, understanding there, and, and we'll talk about that later. But for right now, sensor and motor, I want you to think object permanence, because they love using that word object permanence, and you're going to have to go back and say, oh, that was in the sensor, sensor and motor stage of Piaget's development. Okay, that's how you're going to do it. Now, with Erickson's stuff, it's like, ugh, okay, Erickson's got a bunch of stuff. There's eight stages, okay, there's eight stages with, with, with Erickson's. Now, I don't think, you know, we're not going to go over all eight of those right now, so, but we, we eventually will, but <clears throat> I would say, well, I don't even want to go into them right now because it's, it's just too much um, because I have a, a very unique way we're going to learn this and that I'm kind of excited about. So stay tuned for how we're going to learn Erickson's uh, eight stages. And then we got this guy named Vygotsky. Vygotsky basically kind of, you know, I don't want to say he didn't like Piaget's uh, work, but he just said, look, it's not so much about the development uh, through those stages. It's more dependent. Um, it's more dependent on social interactions. That was his key word. So if you ever see Vygotsky, I want you to start thinking he thought the development was more indicative of like the children's social interactions and that you learn in this thing called the zone of proximal development, which is kind of what we, we are here, right? Because <clears throat> the zone of proximal development says, look, here's what you do know. Um, you know, here's like everything out in the, in the world and that you shouldn't just, you know, go way out here and, and, and try to teach something that's way out of someone's scope, you want to learn, and, and, and I'm, I'm kind of butchering this, but you want to learn kind of in that, in that medium where you don't, you want to challenge somebody, but you don't want to take it too far. So you want to stay within that zone of proximal development, and that's where you can teach somebody the best, and that was Vygotsky's term. So when you think Piaget, Piaget's theory, he had four points, developmental stages, one of them is sensor or motor, which you're going to say it's object permanence, Erickson had eight stages, which we'll cover. Vygotsky said it's more dependent on social interactions and the zone of proximal development. And then when it comes to testing, uh, what we'll really learn here is, uh, you know, there's a thing called a MOCA, right? And MOCA is a screening, it's a screening tool for cognitive impairment. Now within that, they like to test a certain areas, like which would be, which, what would you do to test within the MOCA for executive functioning. And there's a cube test, there's a, a clock drawing, and usually when you rotate through psychiatry on a consultation service or something, you, they do MOCAs on a lot of old people. It's a screen, again, it's a screening tool for cognitive impairment. <clears throat> um, so cube, clock drawing, and the uh, trail making. You know, that's when it's like, when you tell somebody to go from A to one, B to two, C to three, et cetera, et cetera. That, that tests their executive functioning. Otherwise, when it comes to the testing stuff, all I really want you to know, this thing called the lighter, and then we're going to talk about some uh, Wesch, gosh, I'm going to butcher the name, it's Wetch, Wetchler's uh, Intelligence, and he's got like three of these things, right? Wetchler's Intelligence, there's a Wetchler's Preschool, and then there's a Wetchler's Three, and then there's a basically a Wechsler's uh, W-A-I-S-R for an adult. And it's all based on uh, on age at that point, okay? And we'll go over those. But <clears throat> your take-home point for right now, just for right now, 
just remember COCUS for cognitive impairment. There's this lighter, um, and I might be pronouncing it wrong, but anyways, it's spelled correctly, lighter international performance. And just remember, you're going to use that if there's a communication error. So if there's like someone who's got autism or, uh, you know, some type of communication impairment, you're going to, and you're and you want to test IQ. You know you're going to use the lighter international uh, performance, okay? And then otherwise, relatively, you know, they got good communication skills and stuff. You're going to use an, a Wechsler's test. It's either like a Wechsler's, um, you know, Wechsler's preschool, and or you. Or there's going to be the uh, Wechsler's 3, which is going to take you from like 6 to 16 years of age. And then 17 plus is your WAIS. And we'll cover that more in detail. So don't, don't get bogged down in that or like, holy crap, this guy keeps going. And too much, right? Too much. I'm trying to stay within that zone of proximal development. So let's review what we know real quick. Gross motor. Jaw person, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Two months can lift their head up. Four months can turn over. Six months can sit up. Eight months can crawl. Ten months can walk. Fine motor. Draw one, two, three, four, five, six. Ages. One can draw a squiggly line. At two years of age, they can draw parallel lines. Three at three years of age, if you would draw a circle. Four years of age, you'd be able to draw a square and a cross. Five years of age, you're thinking triangle. Six years of age, multi-sided, but death is permanent at six. For social skills, I want you to think. There's parallel play where they're side by side, but they're not really communicating with each other. Associative play is now they're starting to communicate, but they're really not on the same goal uh, of, of playing. <clears throat> and then cooperative play is they're actually using social skills uh, among each other uh, to play together. And again, uh, eight months, eight months of age, you're thinking that's the peak of anxiety. 18 months is when the earliest for toilet training. When it comes to theory, we'll talk about Piaget, Erickson, and Vygotsky, but for now, Piaget has sensory motor object permanence. Vygotsky has uh, developed, is the development is based, more based on social interactions, and you learn within the zone of proximal development. And then for testing, you think MOCA, cognitive impairment, lighter test if there's uh, some type of impaired uh, communication barrier there, if you want to test IQ, and then we're going to learn about the Weschler scale. So now with that being said, let's come back to our original question, right? <clears throat> Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in the management? It says, a three-year-old girl is brought to the physician by her parents because they are concerned about her behavior. They describe their daughter as stubborn and always on the go. She can rarely sit for more than 10 minutes. She often refuses to comply with their requests and sometimes throws three to five minute temper tantrums. They report that she requires frequent direction and assistance in preparing, preparing for food. Her preschool teacher notes that she is active and talkative without being disruptive and is beginning to demonstrate more interactive play with peers. She generally sleeps through the night and occasionally wets the bed. Her appetite is good. Her first word was at the age of 11 months. And we really didn't talk about that uh, so much, but you should be expected 12 months, one year, you know, one, one or two words uh, per se. Uh, at two years of age, you know, thinking two words and so on. And she began walking without assistance at the age of uh, 14 months. Physical examination shows no abnormalities. On mental, on mental status examination, she initially hides behind her mom, but warms up to the interviewer after a few minutes of beginning and begins playing with toys in the office. Her speech is 90% intelligible, and her vocabulary is large for her age. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step of management? Is it A, reassurance, B, play therapy, C, speech therapy, E, neuresis alarm, E, trial of fluoxetine, or F, trial of methylphenidate? What do you think it is? The correct answer, you're right. there's no deal breakers in any of this, right? I mean, she's she's plus minus. She's hitting a lot of the milestones. You know, it's not there's no drastic changes. And they always talk about, even though they mention something, and they'll say, well, she's shy, but then she'll start playing um, <clears throat> and stuff. So what's the correct answer? It's going to be reassurance. And it's going to take you a lot of courage to on the step exam to say reassurance or nothing to do. Um, but if you understand this, and we'll talk about this more, and again, guys, I'm going to be making short videos, those shorts, and I'll put them in a playlist, okay, for developmental stages. Watch those over and over and over, and then you'll have all this stuff. Now, at the end of this video series, you'll have these because we're just going to reinforce these as we go, okay? So again, gross motor, fine motor, social skills, theories of learning, and as well as testing. Hope it was helpful, guys.